Well, sure. I, uh, first of all, I want to uh, thank you. This is our, one of our local newspapers, and uh, I know there was a positive editorial about encouraging me to run. That, that was part of what I looked at in the last couple of weeks and when I was making kind of this pretty life-changing decision uh, and with the family. And, and uh, I uh, want to tell you that uh, when I changed my mind, I haven't changed the way I do business or the way I communicate with people. It's been 22 years of uh, a very high level of dedication to the city and five different departments and you know I've really felt good about what we've accomplished. Uh, the first seven months uh, I put my head down uh, admittedly never ever thought about this office of running for mayor just wanted to get the job done. We set out some pretty aggressive goals. Uh, $380 million budget gap had to really focus on and make sure we we covered all the bases for that and keeping an eye on both the state and the feds to see if they're going to impact us in every decision that we make. Uh, introducing uh, for the first time in the history of the city a, a, a really serious uh, contributing pension reform uh, that will give us about $1.2 $1 2 billion in the next 10 years that will also be linked to the way we do the budget because it was impacting our budget. And, and I got that very clearly from, from the beginning. Uh, we sought that during the same time uh, a new police chief, and, uh, Greg Sir, and it's been uh, not only a popular choice, but I know the guy is doing an effective job, and he's out with me in the Bayview and all over the place, but I talk about the Bayview a lot because there is a lot of crime there, and we had to give hope that we're going to keep everybody safe and not abandon them at all, and especially when there's an officer involved shooting uh, and how that turned out and how we communicated was important to me. Uh, uh, that's again reflective of Greg Sir and his leadership with the police department and community policing. Uh, kick started America's Cup, and that's been an exciting part. I got to ride on my first boat, sailing boat, and kind of get some personal excitement of what it feels to be on that exciting water in the bay and how these fast paced boats uh, are going to do. And, that kind of got me excited. And then working on local hire local jobs, that's been, uh, in fact, that's really been the mainstay. That's been something nonstop uh, that I'm working on and something I want to continue doing. All of those things uh, were not easy to do in seven months' time. Uh, but I've enjoyed working with the Board of Supervisors in a very cooperative way to uh, get these things done. And then as I went out and did the 10 town hall budget meetings, as we went out and met with uh, dozens of community-based organizations from health services to uh, youth programs to the school district. They've all said uh, and complimented that uh, this is kind of almost to them a refreshing way that business is done at City Hall. And uh, they registered that they would like to see this continue. And uh, all of that culminated in the last two weeks of uh, my looking at what we've done, how we felt about it. And, and I think uh, that uh, this is really uh, a time when I could be very willing to continue doing this type of work and uh, made that decision and put the papers in yesterday and uh, jumped into the campaign. And despite uh, you know, uh, the challenges of the first campaign debate last night, uh, kind of everybody was welcoming me in. Um, I'm up for the challenge and I'm up for letting the voters decide what they what whether they want us to continue doing the kind of work we've been doing. Uh, coming off of these seven months and going right into a campaign and then still keeping the city uh, uh, alive and, and, and focused, uh, it's going to be a challenge. And it's one that I'm up to it and uh, kind of took a big uh, a breather in with the family and said, let's do it. And uh, certainly people like Senator Feinstein and others have been very, very encouraging. Uh, and I want to continue uh, that spirit in City Hall. So that's what I want to begin with, and I uh, hope to work with you and earn uh, your respect and the way we conduct business uh, at City Hall and through the neighborhoods. Were you expecting that type of reaction last night? It was pretty... You know, actually, I didn't know what to expect, uh, and so therefore I expected anything and everything. And so it didn't surprise me, uh, and I, you know, I'm, I'm usually a calm person, so uh, I've been through those uh, years where that kind of... Uh, activity actually occurred at the Board of Supervisors when decisions were being made and uh, kind of brought up, says, Jesus, this, 
it's good that we've changed the tone at City Hall because I, I would not like that to be the way we conduct business at City Hall. At the same time, when you're out in the community, you expect a lot of diverse opinions, and I'm very willing to take those on. But do you think you're going to be able to be as effective? I mean, you say you're talking about the challenges that you've had to face. Now there's a lot of anger both inside City Hall and outside of City Hall, and there's going to be a lot of impediments to try and do do. Your, your work from here on. Certainly, and I, and I expect some of that, uh, but also uh, being who I am, and they know me, I haven't really changed the way I do business and uh, my willingness to get input from everybody and also work very hard to have one-on-ones with each member of the Board of Supervisors, and I've continued that practice. I'm not going to shy away from that just because a couple, or several of them are candidates, including our old city attorney, mm -hmm. uh, that we have the professional high level responsibility to do the best we can for the city and I'm going to continue doing that. Uh, some people may speculate, well, can we get anything done if that's, there's some rancoring? I hope to avoid that. Mm -hmm. I hope to avoid the days in which things did get done because people were yelling and screaming, uh, either obscenities or name calling as being uh, the decisive uh, announcements of the day as opposed to we've announced a new company coming into San Francisco. Someone's going to create jobs. I, I spent uh, a good part of yesterday at Rocket Space, and that just gives me so much enthusiasm that these small startup companies are coming here to the city because they know and they feel there's hope, and they're still looking at and resounding with the Twitter decision that we made, uh, and then following that with uh, the payroll tax, uh, the stock options decision that we made with Supervisor Mark Ross and Riccarini, with the support of the rest of the board that uh, we were going to exempt uh, those that were about to go public on them, uh, except them from the payroll tax uh, with their stock options. Uh, again, both of them, that plus uh, payroll tax have been kind of viewed as job punishers for tech companies. And then to hear these tech companies saying, okay, the message has been sent, we're coming in. Uh, maybe five or six uh, employees at a time, uh, maybe small, but uh, what we've encouraged in our uh, Office of Economic Development is you start here in San Francisco, you grow and then you stay here. And this is what I want to see and what I think resonates with people who are looking for these jobs. And uh, I hope to connect that up with as many residents of San Francisco as possible. Mayor, uh, how people judge a candidate often has to do with the company they keep. So I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Willie Brown and what role he played and then mm -hmm. counsel he gave you in your decision to be to run for mayor? Well, certainly, uh, former Mayor Willie Brown has been very encouraging. Uh, and, you know, I count him as a, a big supporter, but I also count uh, uh, my uh, relationship with people like Senator Dianne Feinstein as a big supporter as well. And besides him, there are just hundreds of people who have encouraged me to make the right decision here. Uh, and uh, they have been people from the community, uh, people who own small businesses, people who are just workers here in San Francisco, resident association leaders, retired people, uh, they have all been uh, very positive about me uh, making this change. Uh, prior to making the change two weeks ago, they were pushing. Uh, when I went out to these uh, meetings uh, in announcing our efforts to put the, uh, uh, the pension reform on the ballot and to put street bonds out there and the sales tax, uh, I've been welcomed with uh, people who said, you know, they really like the tone at City Hall and they, they, they want to see more of this. So I count Willie as being one of many supporters. Uh, no more, no less. Uh, he's been very encouraging, uh, but so many other people have as well. And uh, I made the decision based upon a, a balance of everybody's opinion, as I've done throughout my career. Uh, there's no one person dominating of it, but you, you, are, you get kind of rushed when someone like Senator Feinstein, who's still in public office, was a great mayor for this city, kind of says, um, by the way, there's a little duty here. Uh, don't just be selfish about it. Uh, continue what you've always done and put the duty of residents and, and uh, the best of the city forward on this decision. How often do you talk to Willie Brown? Oh, gosh. Uh, you know, I might get his input maybe once every two or three weeks at the most. I mean, he uh, he's busy doing his thing. I, I'll read uh, uh, his column once in a while when I have time. Uh, I can't read it all the time, so I miss it, especially on the weekends when I'm doing the extra uh, events that I do. But he was 
played a role in sitting down with A. Smith, right, in terms of selecting your consultants? Well, I, I've known, uh, I mean, I know A. Smith's father personally uh, when I was a civil rights attorney, and so I actually picked up the referral uh, through the father because I've known A. Smith uh, before, and he's had a good reputation. I didn't know him personally, never had a campaign with him, but I certainly uh, talked to Arlo about uh, working with Ace, uh, so uh, he's, he's got a good reputation of himself, and that's why I hired him. How do you convince people who, um, you know, and it was evident last night at the debate, how do you convince people who now see you so associated with Rose Pack and Willie Brown because of the run and run campaign, because they were so vocal, um, because uh, they took claim back in January that they were the masterminds behind your appointment? So they not only took claim for the mastermind to your appointment, they also then started, the, they've exploited this loophole to start this campaign to get you to run. How, how, how do you explain to the common man who doesn't, who doesn't know you how, how you are not tainted by Willie Brown and Rose Pack? Well, uh, as I go out on this campaign, I'm going to talk to everybody. And they, if they have that concern about who I'm uh, working with or for, I'm going to explain that I've spent 22 years at five different city departments as the heads of those departments and under four mayors that I've served, including Mayor Willie Brown, that uh, these are years that I've been proud of and that I've worked on legislation, I've advised mayors, I've been the city administrator for five years, up for another five-year appointment, uh, confirmed by the Board of Supervisors, by the way, and uh, I am proud of the record that I have. I've, I've been an independent thinker, I've had to be, uh, one that's not influenced by any one dominant view and that uh, they also know me and I think a lot of residents know me as the former director of public works. That was the hardest job I ever had, perhaps second to this. <laughs> but that job was hard because we were changing to district representation at the time in the year uh, uh, 2005. I'm sorry, 2000 when I started at DPW. And uh, I had to appeal as a bureaucrat to all of the different districts of the city, uh, telling them how we were going to deliver services directly to them and make sure that they had the confidence that Public Works was going to help them keep streets clean, uh, get graffiti off of them, create new programs while the budget uh, wasn't there, uh, and resonate with all the uh, residents that uh, they can count on DPW to deliver services. In that background, I haven't changed at all. Uh, and I want to continue that level of concentrated focus on all of the neighborhoods. And so uh, I will tell people what I've done, what I continue doing. They know me uh, also if they paid attention the way we've done the budget. I held uh, 10, no less than 10 budget town hall meetings. They've seen me in action. They've seen me take input uh, from all of the neighborhoods and then make a responsible decision. And they like the decisions that we made. Uh, I balanced that budget with the help of the Board of Supervisors with a lot of input, knowing that we're going to have to make serious cuts. And they understood that what we were doing in that budget was working with them about what the most critical priorities of the city were and having that reflected in what we funded in the budget. And Mayor, speaking of the Department of Public Works, a lot of people are taking shots at, at your record now, now that you're running. Um, I've got a letter here from Judge Quentin Cobbs, of the U.S. Attorney requesting an investigation over uh, the, the Recology uh, run ed run matter, but also something from back in 2001 where uh, you were director of public works. Your staff recommended that there be a 20% hike in a rate for NorCal, the parent company, and that uh, ultimately a 44% rate increase was approved. Do you remember that situation? Well, I don't know. All, I don't remember all the exact numbers there, but I know uh, Quentin Cop has been uh, wanting to criticize Recology for some time, and I uh, I saw him at a neighborhood meeting where he asked me uh, whether I would be supportive of uh, a rebidding, uh, you know, the contract. And I've said, and I've said along as a city official, that uh, the Recology contract is not a single person's contract. It is one that is vetted to. Department of Public Health that issues the permit uh, for any company who wants to serve as both the waste hauler and the recycling company for the city. It's vetted through that. It's also vetted through the Department of Environment to make sure we've done our best in terms of uh, uh, the recycling aspects of it. 
And then it's fed it to a whole rate board, the rate board that I sat on when I was in the Department of Public Works. And the rate board has the responsibility of setting those rates and making sure those rates are competitive mm -hmm. with uh, the industry standards throughout the whole Bay Area, making sure that we're not getting gouged in any way. And that's all public meetings that are happening. So we go through a very solid uh, public vetting process for the garbage company contract. And then ultimately it, it, it is presented to the board of supervisors with all that information and input. So I'm, I'm proud that we've done the best we can to have a competitive uh, garbage and recycling uh, contract in the city. I stand by it because it is uh, one that represents the best interests of the city. It, it has helped us get to a 77% recycling goal, the highest in the nation, one that I'm very proud of, the one I kind of get to brag about when I see Mayor Bloomberg at the Conference of Mayors and Mayor Antonio Villagrosa, uh, Mayor of Los Angeles, that uh, they, they're a little jealous of us being able to accomplish this. And they know that we weren't able, we wouldn't be able to accomplish it without a great participation from residents who are recycling because of the information we give them, uh, businesses who are very serious about the green waste and, and wanting to contribute uh, to reducing uh, the greenhouse gases by putting less in our garbage company. And the new proposal that we have for the landfill, I, I think I'm very proud of that as well because that represents us taking thousands of trips off of the freeway and put it in on rail for the very first time uh, and having a smaller landfill that will require us to put less into the landfill. To me, thus formulas for success of any city. And we're still growing as a city, by the way. We're not shrinking as a city. And that mandate to grow but also to lessen our garbage uh, and lessen uh, uh, putting uh, stuff in the landfill is a huge challenge, but I know this city and the things that we've done with the Department of Environment in educating uh, residents and educating not only homeowners, residents in public housing, residents who you might think are not paying attention, they're paying attention to it. They want to be part of this great effort. But I think the specific question is why did you owe go O override the recommendation of staff yeah, who's back decision in 2001 to du double the rates that staff... No, that was the decision of the rate board. Okay. Uh, the, the rate board has the responsibility of reviewing all the rates and making sure that they're compliant. The rate board is a, is a group of uh, responsible uh, department heads that have uh, the responsibility of carrying out what's best for the city. So it was, it was up to the rate board, and I was just a member of it. I believe, too, at the time, the rates hadn't been raised in years and were far lower than the average in the region, and it was necessary to lead to what is now the best recycling rate in the country. Yeah. If you recall at the time, prior to that decision, we had no recycling program. And uh, the company proposed that we had to review whether or not their recycling program was something that we would want to pay for as citizens. And we ended up saying, uh, we would only pay you if you've got those goals done. I think if you look at the rate decision that was made, it's it's based not upon an automatic rate increase. It's you get the rates if you accomplish these goals. And that's measured every five years. And you don't get a rate increase if you don't meet the goal. So we, we incentivize the company to change their culture because they weren't a recycling company at the time. They were a garbage company. They have become as a as as a reflection of this rate system that we put in, the best recycling company this country has seen because we incentivize them to be that way. We were not letting go our goals just because they were a nice garbage company. We want to incentivize them and change the culture in the city. Do you think companies that break campaign finance laws should be getting city bids, should be getting city contracts? Well, I, I uh, of course not. I mean, I think, I think that everybody's got to comply with campaign financing laws and and everyone should be compliant with the ethics uh, uh, laws that are set out. And so uh, I'm a big uh, supporter as the first whistleblower in the city. People have to comply with every law that we have in the city. And that's the way my campaign is going. We have an independent campaign uh, for mayor, and uh, we're going to be fully compliant with any instruction, any rules that the Ethics Commission and uh, the campaign financing laws require. I'd like to go back to um, the role of Willie Brown. So. What role do you see Willie and Brown and Rose Pack playing in your campaign? I see uh, former Mayor Willie Brown uh, as uh, playing a role like any other former mayor would be. There, uh, I, I actually do have kind of a, 
special calling, if you will, for former mayors, because I will have uh, been faced with major decisions as I did my very second day on the job. I called Sen uh, Senator Feinstein and I talked to her about uh, how she handled being interim mayor the last time she was there. It wasn't a call to Willie anybody else, it was called to Diane Feinstein. Uh, I called Art Agnos, uh, my first mayor who appointed me to my very first position. And we laughed about it. We recalled how it was that said, uh, he said, hey, would you stop suing the city? Come on in and be a man. You know, try to help me run from within. You might find it to be welcoming. You know, 22 years later, I find that the 26,000 employees, they, they all want to do a great job. They need leadership to do it at City Hall and Room 200. But they want to, they're, they're, there's a very strong feeling among the city employees that I've met. They just want to do a good job and they want to be uh, supported uh, by what they do. And that's what I've been doing. That's the style I've been, I've been doing. I, so I, I count former mayors as a body of people that I will look towards for advice. Uh, at the same time, I will still make my own decisions. I, uh, they know me as being someone that makes my own decisions, and I have done that. That's why I'm not, uh, I, I don't think I would have enjoyed these consistent promotions from whistleblower to human rights to purchaser to public works to city administrator without having given good advice and also taken good advice from everybody and then still made independent decisions to the uh, uh, review of the Board of Supervisors. They've trusted me. Many machinations of different Boards of Supervisors have entrusted me with a lot of good decisions and I made them. Can you say at this point who will be on your campaign finance committee? Um, I don't think we've made that decision yet. I, I know we're behind in fundraising, but uh, uh, we'll make those decisions. Start in your yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll make those decisions probably in the week, uh, probably this week, week to come. Will Senator um, Feinstein be doing any fundraising for you? Um, I don't know. I, I uh, hope to get uh, all of her support. She's certainly been a big booster. Uh, I will ask her for any help that she can give me. Um, well, Mayor Kevin Newsom. He's on. Uh, we we all we've always we've already talked as well, and he wished me luck. And I'll ask him for every support that he can give as well. Can you talk more more about your discussion with uh, with Gavin? I mean, he initially sought the caretaker mayor and you changed your mind, so I'm curious what kind of feedback you got from him. Uh, I think he, he wanted me to make a decision earlier mm -hmm. and I was very reluctant to. I, I, I kind of indicated to him that a decision is forthcoming. He, uh, I think he said something to the effect that, you know, out of fairness maybe you ought to make a, a decision and let people know where you're at. And I said, I wasn't ready to make a decision. That's not been on my mind. Running the city has been the foremost thing on my mind and until I was through with some very critical things. And ultimately, the signing of the balanced budget was me a kind of a milestone in this administration for seven months. We, uh, that became the final thing because we had already introduced and got great consensus on the pension reform. Did the uh, chief, uh, got uh, AC34 started. Uh, people know uh, I'm unquestioned uh, booster of local jobs and local hire, uh, but the budget balancing was something kind of a christening saying, okay, I got a little break, and the board of supervisors is going on a break, so maybe at that point I started saying this is the right time to think about it, especially uh, with uh, uh, a lot of people like Diane Feinstein saying, hey, it's about time you start thinking about this. But, but Mayor, uh, on that no, all these things that you've gotten done, I believe it's your campaign slogan now, Ed Lee gets it done. Uh, I mean, how much of that would you have been able to get done if you had been running this whole time, if you had made a decision? Well, that's, well, that's precisely, I think, the, uh, the irony of it. I, you know, I, I didn't have uh, any indication at all, uh, nor did I have a desire to be running for mayor when I was getting things done. Now that we have gotten those things done, uh, I, I look back and I say, well, is there any regret in the way we did it? No. Do we want to do more of it? Of course. And that's in talking with so many people, they wanted me to consider making that change. I made that change based upon the fact that we've accomplished so much and we do have a, a very civil tone at City Hall. I hope it not to change. I will work hard for it not to change. The decisions that we make at City Hall, to me, particularly focused on 
uh, our economics of the city and job creation are ones that I want to continue doing. But the tone, and I think was, it's worth the it. tone was based on your non-political status. So do you expect that to continue? We hope so. I mean, the business of the city ought to be uh, primarily non-political. It ought to be ones that are focused on getting things done for the citizenry. And when it comes to the economics of the city, I don't think it should be politics. It should, because that's what we're seeing stalemate Sacramento and Washington, D.C. It's politics that's stalemating it. And I think the residents of this city want to see a mayor effective in a non-political way, especially when it comes to job creation. Are we doing the kinds of things that make the city welcoming to businesses, welcoming to job creation? We've done that. Uh, again, I was, I'm not letting it go. Yesterday I was at Rocket Space. Rocket Space is one of these incubators that have some 80 small companies companies made up of one or two people, five or six people, they're starting up uh, at that space and they're wanting to be the next Twitter or the next Zynga. And they're saying, hey, this city is making some good decisions. We're here because the talent's here. We're looking for uh, innovation. We're looking for a city that welcomes innovation. And we may want to be your next Twitter. And we, want, and we feel, this is what these small CEOs told me, they said San Francisco seems to be welcoming a lot of this innovation and they want to be here and I talked to them about uh, what I did with Twitter. Uh, it wasn't just the talking with the CEOs and the CFOs. When I went to Twitter and visited them, I did something a little different. I asked them if they could leave the room and I can talk to their engineers, the real talent in the room. And, I, and, and so they, they let me do that. And this was before uh, we introduced the legislation. So what, what do you want out of the city? What makes you feel comfortable in working in this city? They said they love the cultural diversity. They love the fact that we are uh, uh, a city that uh, is uh, got different modes of transportation. They love the, the arts and the culture. These are the things that attract them to be here in the city because it keeps their minds innovative and, and uh, keeps the talent going. Because of that diversity, I said, well, what do you need from the city? He said, well, they surprisingly said, well, work with our, our company because they're, they're making a big decision and uh, see whether or not we could stay. But we also like those bike lanes that you do. Uh, they kind of indicated to me that they like the idea that the city has these different modes of transportation, but specifically bike lanes, dedicated bike lanes. I was surprised and laughing. Is that what you want from the city? Yeah, we want more of that. And by the way, we'll walk you down and let you see where all of our bike racks are. And every floor they had their dedicated bike racks. We don't want to. We don't want the hassle of owning cars. That's not our lifestyle. We're not big spenders either. They said we're not. We're not, we're not like this dot com boom that occurred back, you know, in the uh, uh, in the nineties. We're actually we like local pubs. We like local foods. We like the food trucks. Uh, this is all part of kind of their level of creativity and lifestyle. And I got the sense that they wanted to be here a long time and they wanted to enjoy all the things that I kind of like about the city. And they also wanted to make sure it was safe. That was the other thing. And you make sure if we're going to be here at Central Market that uh, we get this little substation you're working on, get a police presence because, you know, to, to be can they said to be candid, if we walk the streets and we're going to a bar, so we'll probably be on our iPads or on our music things. We're, we're not that aware of everything that's going on, and we just want the place to be safe. That's inviting for them as well. Can we, when you were just something on the background, it's not really off the record, but just kind of just, just to, to go to your 